if I'm sad, I'll feel it in another particular place. So yes. really being in tune with what your emotions are trying to tell you, not that. Really because, like, I'm amazingly happy today, but there are, I'm sure, at least four other people on the planet who are sad for reasons that are a thousand percent real to them. So one, mm-hmm. just these emotions themselves are not universal and they're therefore not permanent. So they're, they're information. Like, I'm happy because of a reason today and I have right. a reason to be happy, so let's go with it. So, you know, like, it, it, it's the, the processing of emotion and that this feeling, this anger means that there's something you don't like, not that, that, not that you have to explode and right. become, you know, this angry beast. So, uh, yeah, that, mm-hmm. I agree. Like, the processing of emotion, I think, is useful. But is not maybe not. I mean, that's not a universal thing. But. And I think how emotions show up in your body. Mm. Yeah, you know, and that's why I ask people that all the time. Like, where's your anger? Like, if you were to give your anger a a color, a size, a shape, where in your body is it? Like, and people are always able to identify. it. Right. I think it's being able to get in touch with the mind and the body because too often we separate it. Oh, yeah. But, you know, and I think for somebody like yourself, like, who's very active, and we're going to get into that in a minute, <laughs> but, you know, being as active as you are, you're probably a little more in tune with how your emotions show up in your body or how they manifest themselves as certain things. Yeah, so, you know, it's, I guess a good exem- exemplar of that is really... Like how you all, as my friends, are the support system in this, you know, and what was the PhD track. So you start that thing, and you all know you start that thing. Motivated, uh, it is. It, it, I, it, I don't it. need anybody. I don't need no help. I, like I'm, I'm fine. This is great. Mm. And then at some point, the motivation goes down, and really, the next thing you can hit is discipline. Like I'm going to do this because I'm supposed to do this. Mm-hmm. And so it becomes, even for a while, this juggling match between motivation and discipline that you can handle yourself. But mm-hmm. then, <laughs> when both the motivation... When they start... And then the when they go, <laughs> it really is just support. And that's what, mm-hmm. like, that is, that's what each of the experiences... Like, that's what friends are. Like, that's what, what you have been. That's what... what like, I, in my reference to, like, the swim team has been even my parents and, like, how our, our relationship mm-hmm. has evolved. Like, that, that, yeah, that yeah. is it's all necessary in the, in the track. That's what's, uh, yeah, and, yeah, it's so important for, for us to have that support because so many times, like, people think, I'm going to do it on my own. You know, I got this on my own. And I think part of that is just culturally we're trained to believe that we're going to, we should do everything independent. You know, right. not to depend right. on it, it. It's a sign of weakness that you depend on. Other, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Which I don't even know where that comes from because there are so many other cultures and societies where that's the exact opposite. I mean, <laughs> I mean if we take our examples from the animals, there are a lot of right. cultures, even Correct. the most aggressive of them, as most one would consider, air quotes, wolves, it's a pack. Right. So yeah, <laughs> that's how they define it. Right. So yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they we run. have to do this together. Even mm-hmm. the loss of me is a bit of a natural thing. So let me ask you this: um, mm-hmm. I think you kind of touched on like the the openness and talking to other people and having that support. But I'm going to go back for a minute and talk yeah. about the affirmations. Because what do you say to yourself, like in those moments when you're struggling? When you're struggling to a even make that decision between you know swim team and dance, or you're struggling, you know just to go on and push on through those times, because I know you've had them. Yeah, yeah. And, you know it's like in a very real way. If I I would tell myself, God damn it, Danny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the thing is, I really it's only because I the bit something that has happened from me that the benchmark is less than what I think it's be. So it's really a self-check. Mm-hmm. But that's one thing. And then, so you curse yourself out. I mean, not every day, not all day, <laughs> but, like, I mean, let's, sometimes you have to crack the whip on yourself, even, you know, especially when you're doing anybody else. Mm-hmm. So that's on one side. On the other side, it's really music. Like, I mean, you know, we are, we are dancers through and through. Mm-hmm. Choreographers more still. And so, like, the, you know, the, my creative 
input slash outlet is through music and obviously with dance. So, you know, it, hearing songs that, hearing a good song that resonates with my moment. So, like, like shout out to Kelly Price. Uh, she has a song, It's My Time. And honestly, that was my mute. That was my song all day yesterday, like in and out of the shower. Uh, yes. That's when I was driving. And, it, and, like, and really, it was as much as I can assume I can relate with how, she, how and why she wrote it. Yesterday was absolutely going to be my moment. And mm. so, this is what you're saying. You're right, Kelly. Let's do this together. <laughs> so, you ain't lying, Kelly. <laughs> right. Come on. Right. So, like, in, that, in those ways, mm. it's affirming that. Mm-hmm. How how I'm feeling at my core mm-hmm. is in line with something else that I'm interacting with on the outside. Mm. So it's you know it's an, that's the affirmation that the internal and external stimuli, as a scientist, I'm going to call it, are the same. It's an align. Oh, I love that. I don't think anybody has ever said that, which but it makes complete sense. Like, how do you find something else external outside of you that aligns with what you're feeling emotionally at that moment and use it has that power. Absolutely. And even funny, like, because she has another song. I don't know. I, I must be really into Kelly today. But anyway. <laughs> um, Come on, Kelly. KP. Um, um, she has another song, Healing. And I really, really, really love that song. And that song, in another moment, has resonated with me in a way that would make me put it on repeat just like I did It's My Time Yesterday. But, mm-hmm. And so much so that I started with that song and it was so not my moment that I didn't want to hear it anymore. And I changed to the uh, other It's My Time song. And I was like, oh, yeah! One. So, yeah. I get, so like the, so we get shit. Uh, yeah, I mean it's just it's it's more like if you try one, absolutely it shifts. But like if I try on something that is just not in alignment with what today is, if my it, it will be very clear to me that that is not the case. Like, that's it's not it. Not not it's not it. It's yeah. Not it's not healing today. I've had that. Let's go. If today is my time, so yeah. That, that's what it. That's yeah. That that's the affirmation to really round out the question. Yes. Well, and that, and that leads nicely into, is that a non-sequitia oh, or a sequitia? A sequitia. Uh, <laughs> but it leads quite nicely into the whole creative part because that's, A, how we met through dance. Yeah. Um, but you also have, like, something that you, you're doing that's really amazing you mentioned, which is Sensoria through New Renaissance, yeah. your, your art company. Um, t- talk a little bit about that because you have themes in there that have to do with loss, that have to do with pain and grieving yeah. and hurt and identity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... I mean, uh, so f- I guess first shout out to New Renaissance. Uh, that is my my performing arts company and I love all of you all. Most of them are at, we were definitely represented at, at my defense yesterday. So it was good yeah. having And they're amazing. Day. Dancers like each one of them are amazing as dancers as, and as people mm-hmm. all together. Like I'm fortunate to just have them. So again, shout out to them. But mm-hmm. what we're referencing in Sensoria is, yeah, he, he, uh, Doc is absolutely right. So the it's a tour and it's an arts. It's a three part tour: arts, awareness, and philanthropy. So the art is pretty obvious already. We our medium is dance, and so we we do our concert, but we also bring in. Uh, uh, visual artists, uh, culinary artists, singers, uh, all of the like, from where, whatever, whichever area we go in. Authors. So, authors. Oh, my bad, brother. That's enough. I mean, I, 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 I just have to throw that in. As you should. My as bad. you should have. So let me go back. <laughs> authors, spoken word, uh, uh, artists, poets, uh, all of the like. And so mm-hmm. we bring everybody together um, and, and the ideas that everyone is sharing in a common space where we can really just appreciate art in its really, I guess, rawest of forms. And so um, mm-hmm. the, the part where you, what well, Doc, Doc just mentioned about um, about loss and pain is that that comes in with the awareness part, and that's really our what we consider to be our job as a renaissance. So the concert that we put on is, you know, we, <clears throat> we, we hope it's entertaining, but we're not here to just make you laugh. So what we... Last year, and we'll continue to uh, this year, as it sort of continues to focus on our not just uh, issues like this, so not just um, domestic violence, but women's empowerment. So, how to move out of that space, mm-hmm. um, as you said, identity. So, we also touch on parent child relationships and, and really how that will affect 
what a child goes out in the world and is able to do. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like, that's where the whole identity comes into play. Um, not only just that, but uh, PTSD, homelessness, mm-hmm. uh, the connection between different communities. So we have a deaf dancer. Her name is Tara. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and with her, we're able to link the, the hearing and deaf communities. We also... Um, uh, um, said like PTSD. It's also we also bring in mental mental aware, mental health awareness. Excuse me. So mm-hmm. yeah, in a lot of ways, like this tour is not. It it, it will make you laugh. We have a good time. I guess it. I mean, good time. I guess it was. It was. It, was, it sounds. And there are times when, which which is what I love about the show that I saw mm-hmm. is there's just like a range of emotions you go through. Mm-hmm. Well, shoot, just like even on this podcast, <laughs> right? You like, know what I mean? Like that, that, and I guess that was really life. our point, and that that was our point. That like, it's not for being very raw about the words. This, this is not for the privilege. This is for the hurt. Like this is for the people mm. who have gone through things, and and in a moment, and maybe not every moment in the show. Like even as the choreographer of it, I have not gone through everything mm. that the story shows, but. Somebody, even on somebody on the company, or at least in my world, has gone through it enough for me to be able mm-hmm. to portray it in a particular way on stage. So, if that's the case, it's very. It, we at least hope it's very connectable to audiences. So we come up as mm-hmm. connectable to people in a way that that really just says, "We see you. Like we 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 know we see you, and if we can help." And even if helping is not that we can fix your situation, but mm-hmm. that we can let you know in a very real way that you aren't alone in this moment, mm. then that is, if that's what we can do and that's enough for you, then we'll do it. That's it. Man, I, oof. You know, and it's really just about forming community, but also giving people the voice, giving voice to the voiceless, people who feel like they're in things alone, in their situation, in the sh- situations alone. Um You know, and that's what I really appreciate about that. And so my question to you is, giving all that energy out, Mm. (laughs) (laughs) you know, you know what this is going to come to. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You got to take care of yourself. I'm just saying. So who do you, who do you talk to when you're struggling? Who do you talk to in your times of need or when you're having to make those hard decisions or when you're dealing with loss? Um, who do you talk to? Um, so I have an amazing circle of friends, you included, in that circle. Oh, thanks, um, man. so I'm able to talk to really any of my circle and get something real out of the conversation. And so I can, I, I have a friend who, Charles, that's right, what, who, what you won't take to him is essentially BS. So mm. you, I can be, I'll tell the story, and if I'm wrong, he'll say, okay, but you did that. And so, uh-huh. with, and so what, that, what that makes me do is always be accountable. Because I'm not going to go to him to a story with a story that I know I'm wrong. So you I'm know like, you're wrong, right. Exactly. And so I'm going to tell him, period. So what it, makes, mm-hmm. what it gives you is a sense of accountability and action just because of who your circle is. Mm-hmm. When I when it's a weak moment, like I mean, I have no problem with sharing. So I mean, you know, I've come to you. So we've done, we've chatted with obviously your expertise in psychology, and that's obviously helped with just siphoning really off information. Mm-hmm. But then we've also had sessions like this, you know, and, and right. when you're when you were living in like a simple hills with hypnotherapy, so like it's. I have, you know, when I when I need help, and it's it's really it's because like you know, as you say, doing so much really does cost a bit of energy, mm-hmm. and so to to fill in the gaps, like it really has been my friends and, and really consulting people who like you can help the deficit, like if the deficit, mm-hmm. what the deficit was, was like really just putting things in a particular place, place in the past where they don't have to hurt me now in the future. So mm-hmm. that's what our exercise was, and it's served me quite well, and especially in this space. So, mm. yeah. and, and if there's one thing I will say is, you know how to use your community. You know how to use the community <laughs> of people, family, <laughs> friends, 
around you. Like, for real. Thank you. Yo, <laughs> you are so resourceful. Um,